What's easy. the difference between sort piped into unique and sort dash u? Sort dash u is going to truncate everything to one instance. It's only going to give you the unique ones and only once. Unique dash c is going to give me one instance, but tell me, tell me how many of that instance were there. Okay. Okay. And that's the regex broke out again. All right. Now, this is going to do what the last one did also, but for just one single hour of time. But it's not just an, it's not like nine o'clock. It's from a time partway into the hour to the time partway into the next hour. Okay? And we have to be able to tell grep how to find that whole contiguous hour. All right? And how we do that is again, we're searching for the 21st of October 2014 up to 1800. And then 20 after to 23 through 9, so right before 30. You follow that? And then, or 1830 to 1850, 0 to 9. So 1830 to 1859 in the second group. Right? And then, or 1900, 0 and 1. 0 to 9, because without the way the brackets work, if you just have two numbers there, it means it only sees one digit at a time. So it's going to all, all the ones that start with 0, and then all the ones that start with 1. Do you understand that? Alright. And then 0 to 9. So that's going to be from 1900, 0, 0 to 1900, 19. Okay? And then 1900, 20 after, and 20, 21, 22, because that's where that one started. Do you follow that? And that, that will give us one contiguous hour of time. Questions? I got through a lot faster than I thought. Nobody had any questions during the presentation. Go ahead. Um, is the rest of the presentation that I got here after you presented at that URL? Yes. Okay. The, the, pres the present, well, you'll be able to find it. It's not at that one. It's at... It's at that one, okay? And what you'll find there is all of the, if you just go to bashjunkie.org, there's a presentations link on the main page, then you'll go to that, you, so you'd be able to find it. But what'll be there is all the files for all of the examples we did, <coughs> along with a text file of all the code example searches that we did, and the presentation itself. If you're going to view the presentation again on your own, you have to view it with the notes open. Does anybody not know what that means? Okay. In LibreOffice, when you're viewing the presentation down here without doing it as a slideshow, you're just looking at the presentation like you were making it, at the top there are several tabs. The normal one is what's clicked by default, which only shows you the slide. However, you need the note one clicked so that you see the slide and the notes because I have lots of notes that aren't on the slide and that's where most of the presentation actually is is in the notes unlike where I work where they just read the slides to you? yes because that makes for a bad presentation <laughs> because you obviously can read so why would I read the slide to you? <laughs> <laughs> You did forgive, forget to give the credit at the beginning of this. That's because he wasn't involved in this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> My other two presentations this week, uh, I credited another gentleman that helped me write them. Well, he didn't help write them. I wrote them and then sent them to him and he said, fix this, it's wrong. <laughs> and I would fix it. And then send it back to him and he'd say, okay, you fixed that, but now fix this, because it's also wrong. <laughs> Go ahead. Is anyone, is anyone working on a Unicode version of GREP? Is anyone like, working on a Unicode version of GREP? Not to my knowledge. Increasingly, yeah, running into uh, character sets or um, working on things with people from version of RAP, very few files contain the marker that, to know what the encoding is up front. You're making the assumption it's UTF-A. Oh. Unicode can be written in many yep. different ways. This is the language I was working in. The you've got UTF-16, you've got UTF-32. Got those wonderful Chinese character sets, which are variable okay. bytes. Yeah, it's just yeah. working in so. a language that uh, it's encoding neutral when you open the source it's code up. It's not actually, encoding neutral. It has to know what encoding the probably assumes so UTF-A is how the Unicode is represented in the file. That it, isn't true. I've collaborated with people where the development tools will take the source code, look at your local workstation encoding, and that's what it spouts out to you. So it's actually translating as you take it from the, the source code. And so they may, may have been, uh, it was the Ruby. So it was written on a Japanese keyboard, downloaded, it changes it into, uh, not a lot of people are using the C default right now. So uh, that makes, this is a, a, a tool that we have that they don't, so it, it's, it's coming up more and more that, that someone's sent something that may have odd stuff in it and source code and whatnot is, is not always in, in a C encoded, we can compile them C encoded workstation. So. I don't know what you mean by C encoded. Anti or uh, uh, POSIX, like anti C standard default for Unix systems character set, so what this is. Any other questions? That was way too quick. Has anybody tried any of the like online uh, regex calculators? Uh, I don't know of any calculators. I know something that will tell you what your it regex is going to do. Expression calculator. Yeah, I. will come back. I don't know. The only thing that I've ever used is something to check my regex. What it does is says, okay, this group will find like is going to find blah, and this group is going to find blah, and this group is going to find blah. That's the only thing I've ever used. Do that one that does the reverse. What do you mean? It's going to write index. your regex for you? Yes. How's it going to write your regex? <laughs> you have, isn't that right now? Probably. Can you go to Google and search for the regular expression calculator? Yeah, there is someone that has. Springboard Solutions, uh, the hit for Springboard Solutions. If anyone wants to challenge Google, regex and all. That's an XKCD thing, isn't it? It's an actual website. Yeah, it is, but it's an actual website. Challenge yourself and try to go on there. So, is that inspired by XKCD or the other way around? I am not totally sure on that. Uh, Neither one surprised me. Randall Monroe is one of those people. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Thank you, Thank you. Google Pixel is like funny.
so free to build your Revit projects. Oh, yeah. There's a downloadable one of those. Hmm. I never even heard of such a thing. <laughs> Okay, this is one of the files in my, and I think I missed a slide in the presentation, because did we ever have one that showed me matching the control characters? No. No? Then there's a, we missed a slide, because I have control characters in this file that I matched. That's useful. Keyboard to get the control character. The control character. All by itself? Yes. Because yeah. in Vi you can insert control character. And they made this file in Vi. Control V, control Right, you do control V, which says interpret the next key press exactly. should be at the end. So wrapped. Let's let me go back and see if I can find that slide. Yeah, and I said it was coming up. Because mm -hmm. I, I thought it was. <laughs> it's coming up now. <laughs> is there a command called Hebra? There is. It's deprecated. Okay. Because back in the day before Grep had extended regex, they wrote egrep to incorporate extended regex. Now grep itself has extended regex with the dash uppercase e. And on some systems, egrep is just symlinked to grep dash uppercase e. Probably in the global RC. Mm, okay, right. It really makes you wonder how a programmer can write a 
regular expression of evaluator. Yeah, it was, I'm <laughs> betting it was a challenge. Chicken and the egg. No, but the slide's missing. Did I accidentally delete that slide? I must have. You I did. You dropped that you made. Well, because I added this is you know, you don't write something from start to finish and it remain the exact way you wrote it. Things are edited. And I accidentally must have accidentally deleted that slide. Yeah, because we go right into my two ending examples. There was supposed to be another slide in there. You never wrote it. I did write it. <laughs> well, check the website. It showed, us, it showed it matching the control characters. Go to the slide before that. Before it? Yeah. There's more character classes than you list there, too. There are not in grep. There are? Okay. Not in grep. Okay. I mean, there may be, and I may be unaware of them, but I don't believe so. I believe I've got all the ones that are in grip. It does not have all of the character classes, like your character classes in, in PHP. It's, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's going to be different. Yeah, I think backslash D was for decimal, which It's for zero. digit. Backs, a, lot of, a lot of things use a backslash D for a digit, and it, it, that, isn't, that doesn't work with really well. Okay. No one came up with a standard paradigm when they quoted these tools, so each one can be a little right. different. So your regex engine in PHP is going to be a little different than the regex engine in Bash, which is going to be different than the regex engine in Sed, which is going to be different than the one in all. Which is quickly, yeah, when you want to chain the tools together, your syntax, it's... Then, then I think you get saying that they support Perl and Well, PCRE, that's a completely, that's a completely different beast, because PCRE, is, it's not really Perl's regex. Okay. It, it tries to imitate Perl's regex. Okay. And sometimes it does a better job than other times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I ended the presentation early. <laughs> the presentation ended early. It's oh, over. It's all so, <laughs> sorry. Um, you can pull up the URL. Yeah, I'll give you the slide. The, I'll give you a URL that tells you where you can get the presentation and all the files, the accompanying files. This crowd didn't ask me enough questions to have it run for that. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you.